Hello and welcome to day four of fractions. Today we're doing number line fractions. So this is a picture of a number line right here. That's a number line. It's a line with numbers on it, of course, a number line. And let's show you a different number line. There's a different number line. So the first one goes from one up to 10. The next one goes from one up to 20. You know what number lines are. They can sometimes have zero on them, which on the top one would be here, wouldn't it? Zero. But we're looking today at fractions going on a number line. There's no fractions on these two number lines, but we're going to put some on shortly. But first, let's quickly revise what we've done with fractions so far. So shaded fractions. What fraction is shaded? Hopefully you can tell me. Hopefully you said it's one quarter. One quarter shaded. What fraction is unshaded? One, two, three unshaded out of four. Three quarters unshaded. One quarter shaded, three quarters unshaded. Move on to the next one. Slightly different. There's none, there's none unshaded this time. But what fraction of these are green? What fraction are green? There's four green. How many in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four tenths are green. So what fraction are purple? What fraction are purple? It's the rest of the tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six tenths. Because four tenths and six tenths makes ten tenths, all of those little circles. So four tenths are green, six tenths are purple. Let's move on. Add in and subtract in fractions. So first add in 5 sixths plus 3 sixths. It's a bit like 5 dogs plus 3 dogs. 5 plus 3 is 8. But it's not 8 dogs, it's 8 sixths. If the bottom's the same, you just keep it the same. That's actually a top heavy fraction. 8 sixths is correct. Some of you year fours, some other children might be thinking that is the same as 1 and 2 sixths. But 8 sixths is fine for your answer. This one is a minus, let's make sure we do minus. 9 minus 4 is 5. 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths is 5 twelfths. Because 9 minus 4 is 5. That was our adding and subtracting fractions. And on Wednesday, or the third day, we did fractions of a quantity. Actually, let's do these one at a time. A quarter of 20. So really, you just need to divide 20 by the denominator the bottom which is 4. 20 divided by 4. So I sing my 4's up to 20. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And my fingers say it's 5. That was the year 3 level of fractions of a quantity. Year 4's gets a bit more difficult. Instead of just doing 1 quarter of 20, you do 3 quarters of 20. So you start in the same way. 20 divided by 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. That's still 5, but you just have to remember that 5 and times it by the top. 5 times 3, 5, 10, 15. Because if 1 quarter of 20 is 5, 3 quarters of 20 is going to be more, and it's going to be 15. So what we actually do, year 4s, is get your 20, divide by the bottom, and then times by the top. So that's what we've done so far. Well, we've done more than that, but that is the basic parts that I'd like to get. Let's move on to something else. Well, a bit more revision quickly first. I'm going to shade in all the parts of this whole circle, there's one part. I shade in all the parts when it's chopped into halves, there's two parts. Let's get a lighter colour. I'm going to shade in all the parts where it's chopped into three, three parts. Shade in all the parts, four out of four. All the parts, five out of five. Six out of six. Seven parts out of seven parts. Eight out of eight, okay? So all these fractions are worth one whole one because the whole thing is shaded in. Well, that's just one, isn't it? This is two halves, this is three thirds, this is four quarters. I'm just reminding you of all the fractions or many of the fractions that are worth the same as one. If you've got all the bits, like it's in seven bits and you've got seven of them, seven sevenths is the same as one. All of these are the same as one whole. So on any one of them I could put five fifths, one, two, three, four, five bits out of five equals one whole. I could write that on any one, couldn't I? In fact, I will, just to make it clear. They're all the same as one whole circle. One whole one. 
Very important. Thought that was worth going over. One of the key parts of understanding fractions is that if you've got all the parts, you've got one whole one. Let's move on. Pizzas. So a pizza can be chopped in half, can't it? Like that. One pizza becomes two halves, okay? So what is a half plus a half? What is a half plus a half? One half plus one half. I've got a picture of it and underneath the maths version of it. What is a half plus a half? Hopefully you're saying it's either two halves. Half plus a half is two halves, which is the same as one whole pizza. Um, let's do a picture version at the top. So two halves, which is like this, together with this bit. There's two halves. Or you could just say it was also equal to one whole one. I think I've got a whole pizza down there. One whole one. So a half plus a half equals a whole. Let's put that in simple, just maths language. The simplest way of writing this, we don't need that part. Simplest way of writing all this is that if you've got half a pizza plus another half a pizza, you have got one whole. A half plus a half equals a whole. Hopefully that makes sense, that's quite important. Two halves go together to make a whole. Let's move on. This page is divided into sections or parts, you could even say fractions. But in this first section here, this blue outlined box up the top, what do you see? Hopefully you're saying half a pizza. What do you see in the next box? One whole pizza. Okay, what do you see in the next box? One whole pizza and a half. How do we write that? One and a half. That is called a mixed number because it has a normal number at the front and it has a fraction at the end. So it's called a mixed number, a mixture of normal numbers and fractions. So the top number is a fraction, then we have just a whole number, normal number, and then we have a mixed number. What's next? Two. Just the whole number two. Over here, one, two and another half. Here we have another mixed number, two and a half. And the final one, one, two, three, we just have three, the whole number three. So on this page, you can see fractions. That is a fraction. You can see whole numbers, like just one or two or three. They're whole numbers. And you can see mixed numbers. The first time I think I've mentioned them to year threes, mixed numbers. One and a half and two and a half, they are mixed numbers. So fractions come in between numbers. So there are numbers in between zero and one. They are fractions. There's also numbers in between one and two, like one and a half. That's in between one and two, isn't it? There's numbers in between two and three, such as two and a half. That's bigger than two, but smaller than three. Does that make sense? Two and a half, it's more than two, because it's two and a bit, but it's not as big as three yet. Let's move on. Here is a number line. I'm going to put some halves on the number line. What's right in the middle of zero and one? The answer is a half. I'm going to put that on the number line there. I might move it down a little bit, line up with that zero and one. So this little line here, that represents half. So zero, a half, one, something, and then two. So what's going to go in here? Well, it's bigger than one. It's one and a bit. It's one and a half. Right in the middle of one and two is one and a half. So zero, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Hopefully you're getting the pattern. We're counting in halves on a number line. Zero, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Our number line finishes on four, but you could go. Four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half. You could go on forever. That is halves being placed there on a number line. Let's say the pattern one more time, join in with me. Zero, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. That's halves on a number line. What's next? Well, do you remember what a half plus a half is? Like a half and a half put together? 
Yep, it makes two halves, but usually known as one whole. It's also, two halves would also be correct, two halves, because it is the same as a whole. So that's correct, and that's correct. But we'd normally say this one, because it's just easier to say, one is easier to say than two halves. Okay, so that's the first question done. Let's get some more questions. What is one and a half plus a half? Well, I think I've got that down here. One and a half plus another half. What's that? Well, it doesn't matter if the half's facing the wrong way because you can spin it. You could spin a pizza in real life, couldn't you? Put it together. Oh, it's two. One and a half plus a half was two. Let's rewind that. We had one and a half here at the front and then we had another half. We, put, we spun it and put it together and we've got two. So one and a half plus a half is two. The rest I'm going to do without the pizzas, just with the numbers. Two plus a half. Two pizzas, someone gives you a half as well, you've then got two and a half. And you just write it next to each other. This is a mixed number, isn't it, which we've been looking at. Mixed number. Because it's two and a half put together is just two and a half. Very easy, really. Two and a half. Plus even means and, doesn't it? Two and a half equals two and a half. Not surprisingly. Let's move on. Four plus two and a half. So if you have normal numbers like four and two, and you have fractions like half, just add the normal numbers. What's four plus two? Six. And then pop the half on the end. Six and a half. Four plus two and a half is six and a half. This is how you can do adding with halves. You don't need to use pizzas every time, but you can if it helps you. I'm going to, I'll quickly draw this one if I wanted to quickly draw it in pizzas. Four plus two and a half. So you've got one, two, three, four. And then you've also got one, two and a half. So you draw your four, you draw your two and a half, and then you count them. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And it was six and a half. So you can draw anything that you want to draw to help you out. Let's move on. Bigger numbers, but still works. 21 and a half plus 12. So first I will do 21 plus 12. You could do counting on, you could do column method if you wanted to. 21 plus 12, it will take you to 33. And don't forget the half. 21 plus 12 is 33, and then you just pop the half on the end. That's how you add with halves. Let's do a takeaway. Four and a half, takeaway three. Pretty much the same, it's just takeaway instead of plus. The whole numbers are four and three, but this is half here, okay? So four take away to three is going to be one. Four take away three is one, isn't it? But we had this half as well, so it's one and a half. The half didn't really change, but a four went down by three, so it went to one. Minus makes things smaller usually, remember, as I always say in morning maths. Four and a half take away three is one and a half. Four and a half got smaller. Now it's only one and a half. And I think we have a big takeaway up here. 13 and a half. 13 and a half take away seven. 13 and a half take away seven. I'll do 13 take away seven, which is six. But don't forget this half. I haven't taken away the half. 13 and a half take away seven equals six and a half. I'm actually going to invent one more where you do take off the half. I'll show you what I mean. Say five and a half minus two and a half. Big numbers first, the whole numbers first. Five take away two, that's three. Now we do the halves. Half take away a half. Well, if you had a half and you took a half away, there's nothing else. So it's just three. Five and a half take away two and a half is three. Okay, that's really all that year threes have to watch. If they're happy now, You've looked at how halves work on a number line and you've added and subtracted using halves and that's what your work will be about today. So if you're happy year threes, you don't need to carry on. But I'm gonna move into more year four level work. Year threes can continue if they want to. I'm gonna continue with number lines though. I've got five different number lines on the page. They're empty at the moment though. The first one is going to be a number line between zero and one. I'm not even going to split it up into any parts, it's just one part. So I'm not even going to write any fractions on there because you know there's fractions between zero and one. I'm not going to write them on, I'm going to keep it as one whole section and go down to the next number line. This is, only, this is going to be between zero 
and 1. But I'm just going to put something in the middle. What is exactly in the middle of 0 and 1? Hopefully today's lesson has taught you that a half is exactly in the middle of 0 and 1. So this is a number line split into two halves. We've got half of it here and the other half of it here. Split it into two halves, didn't I? Next number line, I'm going to split into three bits. I'm also going to start at 0 and finish at 1. I'm going to do this on every number line. Start at 0 and finish at 1. Start at the whole number 0, finish at the whole number 1. In between, I'm just going to put fractions. But this third number line now that I'm on here, I'm going to split this one into three bits. They should be completely equal bits with fractions, just so you know. They should be completely equal bits. So, how many bits is it in? Let's colour them in blue. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three. See, I only had to put two lines in to chop it into three bits. But I've got three bits. What are those bits called? What's it called when you chop something into three bits? They are called thirds, aren't they? So this is one third, and this is two thirds. One whole one is, of course, three thirds, because if you've got three bits out of three, you have a whole one. Next number line, I'm going to chop it into four bits. Do you know what it's called when you chop things into four bits? They are called quarters. So a number line in quarters, zero, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and four quarters is the same as one. Notice how with my fractions, sometimes I do quite a straight line, sometimes a diagonal line. That's okay. Fractions can be written either way. So, split it into four quarters. There's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and four quarters. Look at the size of those quarters. Think about what you notice about them. And the final number line, I'm going to split into five bits. Oh, I need to only draw four lines to draw that, weirdly. Four lines, we'll split it into five bits. Let's check this five bits. One, two, three, four, five. Now, they should be completely equal. They should be completely equal. Mine might not be 100% completely equal. But pretend that they are, please. They're supposed to be completely equal. So zero. Let's split it into fifths because we split it into five bits. So they're called fifths. One fifth. Two fifths. Three fifths. Four fifths. And five fifths is the same as one, isn't it? So I've got five different number lines. Um, I wonder what you notice about the sizes of especially these things called unit fractions. A half, a third, a quarter, and a fifth. So all my number lines were the same length. All five of these number lines were the same length. This tells you how big a half is this big, how big a third is, not as big, how big a quarter is, not as big, and how big a fifth is, not as big. Now that's a bit strange, isn't it? Because people look at a one over two, a half, and think, well, two is smaller than, say, a five in a one over five fifth. So people might think that a fifth was bigger than a half. But can you see by the purple lines, a fifth is actually quite small, and a half is actually quite big compared to a fifth. This is because when you make a half, you've only chopped your line into two bits. So those bits aren't that small. But when you've chopped your line into five bits to make fifths, when you chop something to five bits, those bits are quite small. Imagine how small tenths are. I haven't drawn them, have I? Tenths are very small because you take this same number line and you chop it into ten bits. They're really small. Imagine how small hundredths are. When you smash something into a hundred bits, they're really, really small. So you've got to be careful when you think about the size of fractions. It's not always what you think. In fact, it's often not what you think. Now I'm going to put those four that I've circled in purple, I'm going to put them all on the top number line, which is currently empty. I'm going to write a half where it belongs. I'm going to write a third where it belongs. I do a little mark each time to show where they go. I do a quarter where it belongs, and I do a fifth where it belongs. These little blue bits at the top, they're not numbers, they are the little marks where I'm putting those fractions. So can you see how zero is obviously the smallest number on the number line? 
One fifth is smaller than one quarter. One third is bigger than one quarter. And one half is bigger than one third. One half is the biggest of those fractions on that number line. Even though its denominator has a two instead of a three or four or five, which might look bigger, half is actually bigger than, say, one fifth. So that's putting fractions with different denominators on a number line and looking at the sizes of them. That's something that you do in year four. Okay, the last part of year four's work is looking at rulers because fractions appear on rulers. The top picture is just what a ruler might look like. It has centimetres on usually and it often has inches on down the bottom. Um, we deal with centimetres, don't we? So I've zoomed in on centimetres on this picture here. Okay, we're usually going to deal with centimetres at school, usually. Um, you can see this is, is basically a number line, isn't it, a ruler? It can basically be a number line. I'm always advising children to use plus, use rulers for plus and minus when they're counting on and back if they need them, because they can just make things much faster. There's no fractions on this number line at the moment. There's just the whole numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We could put some fractions on. Hopefully I can make my pen small enough. Let's see. In between 0 and 1 is a half. In between 1 and 2 is 1 and a half. In between 2 and 3 is 2 and a half. That's the kind of number line we were doing with year 3 earlier. You see how the half centimetre has this extra long line here. It's not as long as the 0 and the 1 get, but it's an extra long line to show you that that's halfway through the centimetre. So that's how you could use a ruler to count in halves. Notice in that extra long line, in between 3 and 4, it's going to be 3 and a half. So keep an eye out for that. So you could count in halves on a ruler. Also on a ruler, in between 0 and 1, there's a lot of little parts. They're very small. How many parts are there? Let's count the lines in between. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But there's not 9 parts. Just because there's 9 little lines in between the 0 and the 1 doesn't mean there's 9 parts. I'm going to count the parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so the centimetres on a ruler are split into 10 bits. What's it called when you split something into 10 bits? They are called tenths. So rulers are split into tenths. Centimetres are split into tenths. That's worth knowing. So I count along, we've got zero. Then we've got one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. And when you get to ten tenths, you've got a whole one. Because ten bits out of ten is one whole one. I'm going to just finally finish off with a little pattern of tenths and connect them to decimals, which is something else that year four come on to towards the end of year four. Let's pop that picture up there. So I'm going to do a little pattern here. Now, I think I'm going to start with, start with zero. Bigger than zero is one-tenth. So above zero here, the next line is one-tenth. Then you have two-tenths, three-tenths, four-tenths, five tenths. I'm going to keep going over here. You could have six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and ten tenths. Ten tenths, ten out of ten, is one whole centimetre, isn't it? Or one whole whatever you're talking about. Now you might have heard of decimals. One tenth is known as, it's less than one, isn't it? So as a decimal, decimals have a decimal point. One tenth is known as 0 0.1. Two tenths, less than one whole centimetre still, so 0 0.2, because the whole numbers come before the decimal point. Okay? Like in money, the pounds come before the decimal point, the whole pounds. Three tenths as a decimal is 0 0.3. Four tenths, 0 0.4, you get the pattern, don't you? I don't know if you knew this before, but fractions are basically decimals. They just look different. It's just a different way of writing the same thing. Five tenths 
as a fraction is 0 0.5 as a decimal. And it's worth exactly the same, it just looks different. 5 tenths would be here on this middle line. 5 tenths and 0 0.5, also known as a half, by the way. 6 tenths is 0 0.6. I'm sure you get the pattern now. Fractions into decimals. Some fractions are worth the same as some decimals. 9 tenths is 0 0.9. And one whole one, let's actually put the one over here. There it goes. Because one whole one would be 10 tenths, as you know. If you've got all the bits, you've got one whole one. One whole one, one whole is the same as one point nothing. One is just one point nothing. They're all the same. So 1.0 is the same as the whole one. So that is fractions going into decimals. One last thing to show you. Uh, we don't need the ruler now. When you're coming into decimals, we can make that small. And make that small. This is just a little extra bit, really, now for some year fours just to show you that fractions and decimals are very much connected. If I write a number such as, well, zero, that's a number, isn't it? It's just nothing, a whole number, no whole ones, and I put a decimal point. After the decimal point, you might get something like a two, like on that 0 0.2. Um, slide up the point above. Whole numbers start with the units column. What's this column called? If you don't know already, it's called the tenths column. The tenths. And it's literally a fraction as the, as the hat. You know, if we carried on over here, it'd be tens, units, thousands. They're all our whole numbers. You can have whatever numbers you want in there. I've changed my number now, haven't I? 5,420.2. But what is the point 0.2 worth? It's worth two tenths. So anything after the point is a fraction or a decimal. So you can see the hat is a fraction, and this is a decimal. So it says it's the tenths column, so if it's got a two in it, it's worth two tenths. If it had, say, a six in it, it would be worth six tenths. That would be worth six tenths. Anyway, there's lots more to learn about decimals in the future, but I just it's nice sometimes to find out that fractions and decimals are really the same thing. They're just bits of a number. They just look different. So let's move on to the last slide. What have we learned? You can count in halves like this. Zero, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. And you could count in other fractions. We didn't do that today, but you can do it. You could count in quarters. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters is one whole one. Next bit, you can add halves and sometimes create mixed numbers. So two, plus a half, the whole number two, when you add a half, which is a fraction, you get two and a half, a mixed number. That's the names for these numbers, whole numbers, fractions, mixed numbers. And finally, fractions and decimals are connected. That's what year four really learned. Fractions and decimals can be worth the same. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you again next time.